G'day everybody, my name's Luke Fitzpatrick and thank you for supporting Fish That Snag. Today's topic, we're going to break down a fishing location and we're on the hunt for tiger squid. So I'm going to run it pretty much like I did last week. There'll be two parts. This is part A in which I'll give a bit of a, uh, uh, a ground brief of such to set the scenario and then part B will be uh, the solution to our little problem as well as some footage from a recent uh, fishing expedition where I was out chasing tiger squid. Okay, so let's get right into it. The picture in front of you is the fishing location. For many Harvey Bay locals, you'll probably recognize this spot. It's quite a, prop, quite a popular fishing location. Uh, at the moment, it is high tide. Well, the tide has actually just turned and is now on the way out. So what I'll do is I'll just go through very briefly some key features of this particular area and then we'll get into our little competition. First of all, you can see following my cursor, there's the top of the island just here. It is high tide and there's quite a large part of the island over here which is submerged currently. The boat is located here. And this time both the photo for part A and part B have been taken in exactly the same spot. One of the things I learnt from the last uh, video. One of the key features to try and picture in your mind is that the island, even though you can see it here, the rocky outcrop, it actually continues under the waterline on this sort of angle here. And that's why you can see a disturbance in the water across this line as the water is trying to exit out of the sandy straits it's basically being forced up over some shallow ground and then flowing out over the top of it back out into the bay. Here's the tidal direction for this particular location. Um, basically what's happening is there's tidal movement this way and it's also forcing water down this way down a channel so in effect what it's doing is it's breaking around the point of this island. So it's basically coming this way towards the corner and it's meeting resistance and choosing to go that way and that way as it floods out. This is further supported by, you can see in the distance, this sort of current line that's wrapping its way back out into the bay. Uh, so the water is really spilling over and moving quite rapidly here. Um, and then it slows down in this sort of area quite a lot. I'll just explain the contour lines under the water because this is pretty important when chasing squid. So from the island itself, which is very rocky as you can see, there's a, a couple of meters of ground there where it's very shallow. Zero through to about 40 centimeters, maybe 50 centimeters, and it's extremely rocky in there. You throw a weighted soft plastic up there, uh, you're pretty much guaranteed to get snagged up pretty quick. Then after about two meters or so, it starts dropping down to about one meter. It's still quite rocky and quite snaggy in there, um, but the rocks are starting to spread out a little bit and there's a bit more sand in that area. Then from the orange line to the red line, roughly, it drops to about one to three meters on a bit of a gradient. And again, the rocks start to disperse and there's a bit more sand in that area. And then from the red line down, three metres plus, down to about five or six metres at the deepest part back down this end here. All right, so hopefully in your mind you can picture the, the island now and understand the tidal movement as it's going around that island. Righto, so here's the grid. We're going to uh, have a little competition almost exactly the same as what we did last week with the creek entrance. You've already probably pictured in your mind where you would cast your squid jig. I'm not so interested in where you would cast, but the competition is to pick the square where your squid jig would be taken by the squid. So, for instance, you may choose to cast into the square A5 and bring your lure back in a relatively straight line towards the boat and then get hit in approximately C5. So your answer would be C5. You may decide to go out deep and cast into A8 and bring it back on a slight angle and 
you might choose C7 as the square that your jig will get hit in. Essentially, the way I'm going to judge this is I've got footage of me fishing in this location and casting and getting hit by a number of squid. So I'll use that footage, which is taken from the exact same angle as this photo, to basically pick the winner uh, for this little competition. It's nothing too serious, exactly like last week. It's just a bit of fun. Get us thinking about this fishing location and hopefully generate a little bit of discussion about targeting squid. There's a really great article in the June edition of Fish and Boat magazine which goes through some techniques for targeting tiger squid, an awesome species to target both land-based and off your boat. So have a read of that. Let's do a little bit of research, have a little bit of a uh, discussion on the best techniques and things, and then at the end of this week, on Friday the 3rd, 3rd of June, I'll post a full video, which will be part B, which will show uh, the location of where the squid have actually hit the jig, and also some tips and tricks on how to actually uh, stalk squid and catch them as well as some highlight footage of the recent trip we had. So there you go, there's the challenge folks. I hope you enjoy it. Please uh, let's not get narky at anybody over this. Let's just have a bit of fun, hopefully learn something from one another, and we'll see what happens on Friday. Good luck.